Let's analyze some of the examples of AR apps with a considerably strong storytelling part. You can see that I have selected only 9 cases. It's not many, but I tried to select applications and use cases that do implement and then different techniques of storytelling. I'll give a short description, outline interesting for our topic features, and give a brief conclusion for each case. And since all apps are quite different, in the end we'll have a collection of different methods of storytelling that you could use in your own AR projects. Also, it's very important to understand uh, the target audience of analyzed app. How to understand who is the target audience? Uh, well, the simple solution is just read the official description or watch a marketing video of an application. Uh, you can also check application categories on Google Play and App Store. The first app called Wonderscope. Well, let's start from the official trailer. Okay. Wonder scope. Oh good, you're here. We better get going now. Grandma has a lot of seeds for us to plant. Can I touch it? That's cool. What if you fall? But you got the... I'll get crushed to death by the thousands of tons of water. Oh, look at that. That's crashing down below me. Is that a good idea at your age? Age ain't nothing but a number. Here we go. Time to blow away some wrinkles. Wonderscope basically tells several interactive stories in the form of AR. When you try to outline storytelling features, understanding the target audience is essential. Wonderscope is for kids, uh, I think it's obvious. Uh, thus, I can tell that in a good app for kids, there should be no difficult meanings or technical actions. And what is the most common technical action that goes with AR? It's scanning and recognition, of course. The process of scanning is implemented in a very contextual way in Wonderscope. In this app, a virtual helicopter platform flies around the room while you should aim it. Behind this contextual storytelling process, a room scanning happens. All of AR apps consider some form of interactivity. Interactive events triggered in Wonderscope by clicking on UI, clicking on virtual objects, and by saying specific phrases. But even with UI, it always played out, so it's like virtual characters address you, like they see you, they hear you. Well, like these characters also alive, and they are in real world. Wonderscope's tutorial process and the process of asking camera and microphone permission wrapped in the context of the virtual world, providing emotional bond with the world of your app right from the beginning. This is a fun way of making tutorial easy and digestible, especially for kids. So what findings we can make based on Wonderscope? Use as many contextual explanations as possible. Wrap functional part of your app in a fictional context. Make virtual world react to a user to smooth the edge between virtual and real world in order to increase immersion and enhance storytelling. Add some interactivity, even in simplest app. Interaction is a very important cognitive action that enhances the perception of information. And I also want to say that even if you're making your app not for kids, uh, it's still good to avoid complicated tutorials about how your app works or what you should do in order for this app to work. Uh, especially it is important in AR because it has specific scanning features uh, that require camera permissions and microphone permissions. And our next case is Tonandi. Let's start from the video.
Together with Sigros, Magic Leap Studios set out to discover and manifest the DNA of their sound in a new reality. The result of that collaboration is Tonandi, an interactive audio-visual exploration of the sounds and spirit of Sigur Ros. This is the official app description. It doesn't have any specific storytelling at first glance. But you should always remember about target audience. This app was developed for the fans of Sigur Ros band, and this app uses music and sounds recorded by Sigur Ros. This app basically shows audio-visual effects in your space with some interesting interactivity that is possible due to the hardware. At the first glance, Anandi doesn't have any interactions at all, but this app is designed specifically for Magic Leap glasses. Magic Leap supports feature of recognizing user hands, and this recognition actually works uh, really fast, it's highly performant, so virtual objects can react to user hands in real time. Always consider your hardware possibilities when you're developing AR projects. So here are some findings for Tonandi. Again, and I want to stress this out, that you should always take in consideration your target audience. There is nothing bad to design your app specifically for a narrow audience, as we can see in this particular case. Also, this app feels very arty and simplistic. Uh, and it's good, since the music of Sigur Rós band feels also arty, and fans of Sigur Rós certainly like this app. I can prove it myself. I'm a huge fan of Sigur Rós. I listen to them since my school. And it's more than 10 years already, and I rewatched the Nandi videos on YouTube for quite a few times. Then I added an album with the music from this app to my playlists, and so on. So I can tell that this app works. Also in Tonandi, uh, virtual objects respond to users' hands, and not only with different animations or movements, but also with sounds. It's really cool. Don't be afraid of using sound effects in your app. Our next example is Civilizations AR by BBC. Civilizations AR shows ancient artifacts as virtual models and historical information about them. You select an artifact you want to study, write no virtual model of planet Earth. It's a great example of spatial or so-called diegetic interface. In this case, a user discovers the location of selected artifact in the simplest way. It is a great example of smart storytelling. Diegetic interface uh, is a kind of interface that exists in virtual space and not turn off of the application's context. Usually this kind of interface is easily comprehended by users and just feels more fun. This technique is widely used in games and not really in AR apps, so I guess this is a great opportunity to explore what kinds of diegetic interface you can implement in augmented reality. You also can change scale of 3D models from small to its actual real life size, which makes great informative purpose. Civilizations AR contains gamification elements such as X-ray, artifact cleaning, and finding additional information by rotating the artifact. This game mechanic is actually widely used in modern games like Lara Croft and Shadow of Mordor franchises. You see, your brain not just accepts information, but pieces together chunks of information provided by gamified scenarios as you discover them. And this is creating this positive storytelling experience, which then enchants the amount of our insight. Well, in summary for this example, even if you make highly informative AR applications, like virtual museum, don't forget to add gamification elements that can be implemented with AR-specific opportunities. Usually these are rotation of a virtual object in search of additional clues, scaling objects to compare with the real size objects, painting on the virtual objects, and so on. And also consider implementing some of the UI elements in a diegetic form. Our next example is Segments VZR from the Weather Channel. Let's check some of the samples. Once that water comes up to three feet, you can see it would be coming up my shins, up towards my waist. 
This could be enough to knock you off your feet. It could even float some cars that could be parked on the side of the roadway. This is extremely dangerous, but once we get up into that six foot range, look at how high this water goes. Winds pick everything up. Cars would be floating at this point. This water's over my head. I wouldn't be able to stand here, even withstand the force of the water coming in. There might even be dangers like chemicals and uh, exposed power lines lurking in the waters. But once we get to that nine foot range, this is an absolute life threatening scenario. This water is through the first floor of your home. That cold air and the rain doesn't have time to refreeze into sleep pellets. So now we have to deal with accumulating ice. Just a tenth of an inch makes roads and sidewalks extremely slippery. A quarter of an inch can break branches and cause spotty power outages. And once you're over a half inch, serious problems ensue. Ice storms can cause billions of dollars in damage. They can hit ground transportation, aviation, and power sectors really hard. I mean, just look at these power lines. All right, those icicles must be... Oh, gee, you got to be kidding me. Where did that come from? That giant icicle... While this example is not a standalone app, it's still a very good example of usage augmented graphics for better representation of the data. Always remember the rule, show, don't tell, that I mentioned earlier. Show water level to represent consequences of flood. Show piles of money to represent budget amount. Show real size objects to represent scale. In the next part of our lecture, we will talk about two examples of storytelling in AR games, about a good example and about a bad example.